Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Here we are. Another day. Another day. Another day. Another destiny. This never ending road to drinking tea. So here we are. Here we are. I feel like we should start off by saying we're over the hill now. And for us, yesterday is when Crazier Than You went live. Yes. And people have gone crazier than I, me about actually, it. Actually, I only woke up about 15 minutes ago, so I've not checked it. Well, it's just a lot of people, read some of the comments, a lot of people like, finally, we've got a full version. Yeah. Because I always thought we had a full version somewhere, but I guess we haven't, because the only one we did was in rehearsals when we didn't really know what the ending was yet. I think there is a full version. Oh, is it? Yeah. Well, I did not know that. Yeah, it's about some rehearsals, and I think I just cut out the middle bit with all, like, I, literally like we did yesterday. Where we cut out the bit with the arrow and the other yeah. I'm pretty sure there is a version which one, somewhere. Which one's that? Is that live? Or in rehearsals? In, uh, in warm-up. Like, you know, when we used to uh, like do the get-in and we used to have to sing Crazy Than You. Ah, right. So it's one so, of them. On one of your vlogs? Yeah. Ah, okay. Interesting, though. Three years in the making. Yeah, three years. But I think we got overshadowed by... We did. The by trio. Yeah. It's been very loud this morning, so I'm trying not to, like make eye contact or get him riled up. It's because we let him outside for the first time yesterday and he's got a taste for he's like, the wind in his fur. He's like Quasimodo. Out there. He's been out and now it's all he ever wants. In the sun. But the first thing he did was escape through a hole in the back fence and we didn't see him for like 15 minutes and I sobbed. I was so Christ. sad. I was like, that's it. I've never seen him again. But it was funny though, because when I came over to you, it's like, you're all right. You're like crying. And then literally like five seconds later, you heard a meow and he came he, through the fence. He must have sensed it. Yeah, he announces when he's coming. So he got up onto the fence and walked down our fence and along the backs of everyone's gardens the whole way down our little cul-de-sac, but howling the whole way. So you could hear him go meow, meow. He's getting quieter. And then you can hear him all the way back. Meow, meow. <laughs> Hear him coming. See his little white socks. I've got a really good picture yeah. of you can see tree, but then his little white socks on the fence yeah. underneath. But we're not going to let him out again, are we, for a while? No. We've got some gardening cat, what was it? Proofing? Cat proofing, yeah, because basically. Cat proof the garden. I've looked at my info for the house and we don't know who the back fence belongs to. It just says unknown. Mm. But I don't want to just go changing the fence because. It's a really weird layout. Like our back fence is somebody else's like back garden. It's some like some, their like side it's fence. Like a, yeah, their side fence. Right, it's our back fence. So I'm gonna have to go and ask if I can redo the fence. But I don't see why they'd be annoyed at that because it is doing them a favour because they can't see the fence anyway because there's loads of like trellises and shrubbery and stuff yeah. in the way. Um, any news? Anything to report? Your last day of audio book recording today? Yep. The last 65 pages in the credits. Great. How's it feel? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, it's, yeah. It's been hard, hasn't it? Yeah, just it's so hot in that room because you can't have any of the windows open because of the noise. Mm. I've been sat like under a blanket under my desk filled with pillows and blankets. So it's just gotten really, really hot. And it also doesn't help that it's been like the hottest day of the year. Yeah, it's like 31, 32 degrees. So <laughs> I've literally been sat, honestly, Sitting up there is like doing Bikram yoga because I'm sat like with a leg up here and an arm sort of like leaning over like that whilst sweating so hard. Yeah. The recording must set like whoever's got to edit it, it's so funny because every now and again you can hear me go. And <sighs> <laughs> um, we got our fans, didn't we, out, out of the shed? We had two fans which yeah. have really helped because it's been really That hard. sounds like we were keeping two people captive in two our fans, shed. Two fans, yeah. The morale was a bit low in the house, so we brought the fans in. We brought the fans in. And now I feel great about myself. Yeah. That's really helped. Last night, that, I mean, I think that's why I slept so well last night. Yeah. I was out last night. Because the fan just cooled you down. Yeah. Edgar loved it as well. He sat in front of it for most of the night. Did he? Yeah. He didn't sleep on the bed with us. He did initially. Yeah. But then he curled up, like, literally, like, around the bottom of the fan. Mm -hmm. So what I thought I'd do today, loads of emails again. Thanks, guys. Emails Thank are you. great. I thought I'd just do what we did a couple of days ago, really, and just answer more than one question. I feel like it's a good way to sort of do a video if there's not one clean idea yeah. that will last over 20 minutes or 20 minutes at least, or whatever. Mm. It'd be nice to sort of just do a couple. Yeah. First off, something that we've both done mm. recently mm. in our last jobs, mm. 
And this question is from someone called Cara. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, and they've said, I've been watching the Heather's bootleg tonight and after seeing the physicality of the fights in it, mm. do you guys have to do fight calls before every show? I know you spoke a few days ago about warm-ups, but there's no mention of fight calls. Okara works for a producing theatre company in England. Oh. So they've said, whenever we have fights that are intense, we are very hot on fight calls. So, fight calls. These yeah. are a thing. Yeah. Do you want to talk about your fight calls that you did in Heather's? Uh, my main fight calls were spontane. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Probably I, this is more physical. Yeah. I had two really big fights in uh, Les Mis between me and the factory girl and me and Bambi. And the Bambi fight was like the one where every beat was like a really close call. Mm. Um, like the factory girl, it was sort of just like a slap. And then it was all just sort of like movement, like tussling. And it was mm. all like choreographed movements. But once we got past the slap and timing that perfectly, mm. the rest of it kind of just took care of itself. And it happened in like only like few seconds but we still had to do that and every now and again they bring like swings over and in fact I had to do it with um, first cover first cover and second cover factory girl I did it with Kelly as well oh, Kelly went on one night yeah um, so yeah anytime that there's like a cover on the fight calls like get ramped up mm. as well and also adrenaline is on like an all-time high as well yeah. so we need to make sure that everyone knows exactly what they're doing for when that rush kicks in yeah during the show. Safe. But yeah, the Bambi fight was like the scariest one because it was so um, close. Everything had to be like a miss by it amazing. mere inches. It looks really good. I was like really blown away by it. Thanks. I actually have footage of me rehearsing it. But I don't know if I'd be allowed to Yeah, because I was thinking I could put some of my Back to Future stuff on, but I, I don't want to chance it just yeah. in case. So it starts with like a smack across the face with a cane mm. and I'd go down. And then I'd like crawl around to the back of the stage so I was like facing the back and then he'd kick me in the face and I'd go backwards and hit mm. the floor. And the amount of times I used to hit my head because he used to get like really into it. Mm. And so I'd go backwards and then just not think and just hit. Yeah, you got to tuck your yeah. you tuck your neck in there. Because it's so quick. Mm. But either that, even that, I used to land on like the, like between my shoulder blades mm. and my shoulders used oh. to ache so much. Yeah. Like I'd be sat upstairs on my phone and be like that. Oh. Oh. <laughs> like, and then he'd like get on top of me and then I'd bite him and he'd drop his cane and then I'd grab his cane and then I'd go for him. But and this was the hardest bit, I'd go for him but he'd have to catch the cane midair. That was so hard to time perfectly without it going so slow that it looked crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But without going so fast that he missed it. Yeah. Um, and then he'd take the cane off of me and then hit me in the eye with the cane. And that was always like the really good one. I think I like that one. That was the one that always looked really yeah, impressive. Yeah, it looks really good. Because you'd have people dotted around as well that were like napping. That were like doing the claps or like the bangs whenever yeah. he hit me yeah. and they always timed it like so perfectly. Really yeah. and that was a hard one as well because again hit in the eye you go backwards mm. so the amount of times i used to like put an arm down wrong or yeah. like i used to just get overexcited, especially when i felt like the fight was like looking really good up until then i'd be like oh, i'm gonna make this one look great yeah. and then i would just throw myself around that's the thing with fights on stage like, we had the most amazing fight directors on Back to the Future. Um, and they were like, you're going to get hurt. Mm. Like, it does happen. Like, things do naturally change. Yeah. As long as you, like, remain eye contact and, like, with your partner. Because it is like a dance. It's like yeah. a part of the deux, really. Yeah. You have to, like, everything you sort of signal, if something's gone wrong or whatever, yeah. it's all in the eyes. We had these guys, these French guys, and they were absolutely insane. Do you know when someone is, like, so good at their job? And you're like, that looks so good. Yeah. Like, because we like do it. See, we were fighting, mm. and they'd be like, no, it's more like this. And then they'd do it together, and because everything is just so like Sharp amazing, perfect, yeah. you're like, oh my god, that looks really good. And they they just notice the smallest details. Yeah. Um, so it's really cool. I think it's important to say with fight calls as well. The reason why they happen and they sort of have to happen is because of like insurance purposes. Mm. Fight calls will always sort of happen. Well, we did it after warm up. Yeah, I so, see. Yeah, so we do like vo we do we do physical, then vocal, then we do any notes about anything with what's well, changed with the show, any casting changes or anything like that, and then we'd run fight call. Yeah, that's right. And they need to happen because of insurance. Because for example, say we were fighting in a show together and we didn't run fight call and I smack you in the face and you lose a tooth, or whatever. Yeah. 
or you get really injured, then the company will be liable. liable because they didn't do the, pro the, the didn't do the fight call. Yeah, so it's really it's really interesting. Yeah, we used to do fight calls in Heather's as well. Yeah, but Heather's was so hard because I think I said in a previous video, like it's all well and good doing it with all the lights on, but. In the boiler room scene, it was like strobe lights because you had a massive projection of a fan yeah. spinning. And so it was like constantly like, I honestly, the memories I've got of that are so funny because it's mm. like Jamie's face here, Jamie's face there, Jamie's yeah. face there, Jamie's, it was like Bugs Bunny, like constantly darting around. So it's all yeah. well and good doing a fight ball in perfect, like bright working yeah. light. As soon as you got in those strobe lightings, it was like mm. such a game changer, especially when I got my glasses off as well. Mm. That's yeah, the coolest thing we got taught how to kick someone in the balls oh right yeah like convincingly and you actually do make contact like the way to do it is like think about if i like open my legs so then i've got to stand there with my legs open but like sort of tuck my pelvis forward like curl it forward mm. so you know what i mean everything sort yeah. of shifts forward and then you've got a kick with a flex foot and think about your toe or like your toes hitting my bum right but you so see, there is contact because you go smack, but you sort of hit my bum. Yeah. But it looks like you kicked me in the balls. And I remember when we got taught that because we had a fight call. We had like fight school. Yeah. In Back to the Future for like three days. So like me. That was before you even started rehearsals, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. They paid for like fight school because they wanted like the bullies, and obviously there was Biff, and then me and uh, Will, who was like his mates, and then you had like George McFly Marty. and Marty, and then the covers as well, which mm. was really cool. And they just wanted us to learn all these things. Mm. But yeah, they're kicking the balls. I remember when they did it, we were like, oh my God. <laughs> Could you hear? Cause it, yeah, yeah, you hear it. There was a contact there, so you're like, are you all right? But yeah, really clever. Yeah, we had an afternoon of Les Mis yeah. fight calls. Um, yeah, it's really fun. And I remember like doing the choreography for Heather's as well. Mm. And me and Jamie getting like really excited that we were gonna kick the crap out yeah. of each other. I understood this one story as well about that fight call we did. Like like any dancing or like part of the like everyone's sort of different. Everyone's either like they lead or they're more stronger or they're like yeah. more flexible, you know. But in fighting, it can be like they give more. Mm. So you're like, whoa, like geez, because they're just a bit heavy-handed. Mm. And there was like six of us or eight of us in this fight school that we had prior to mm. Back to the Future, and we would always swap partners. I'm not going to name names, but there was two boys in that like fight school who were like pretty like heavy handed. Yeah. Cause there's like a punch bit where you do that and to block it, you just have to like put your hand up. Mm. But they were like, mm, like really yeah, going go for, for it. it. Like, so I was like fighting with them. I was like, Jesus, this actually hurt. And then the fight director was like, right. Um, so I want you and you, these boys who were like going really going for it, but didn't realize they were going for it. That yeah. makes sense. It's like, right, now you do that choreography together. So they were doing it, doing it, doing it. And he was like, yeah, so I put you together so then you could feel how hard you're being. <laughs> so you've got like these two people who were like really heavy handed yeah. together. So, because afterwards they were like, geez, that really yeah. hurt. Ooh. And they're like, now you know what it's like to be on the receiving end of someone yeah. like you, basically. Yeah, you're not meant to be going like that. Yeah, just calm down a yeah. bit. And they were like, all oh, right, which is of course really good. Yeah. Genius. I remember there was this one night in Les Mis where, because it'd be like, I'd be facing the audience and Ellie, who was Factory Girl, she'd like mm. grab my shoulder and pull me round and then the slap would happen. Yeah. And there was something just slightly off. I don't know if it was like I'd lost my balance as I turned around or I just turned around too close yeah. or she just stepped too far down. But as she slapped, her nails caught, like literally it was oh, like, yeah. it couldn't have been more perfect. Like her nails just caught the end of my nose. Oh. But I was like, if it'd been any, like if mm. I'd been any closer, she would have like, properly got my nose and that mm. could have been like a show stop yeah but it was like it was i found it really funny because yeah. it was like so perfect just that little like ink as her hand like yeah, flew past my face we had a really good story with our fight directors at the end as well um that we opened back to the future at manchester opera house and i think eight years prior to that these boys um they entered britain's got talent Oh my god! And that's the theatre that they went to Aww. to do their audition. I think they got through to the semi-finals. That's so cool. Um, but then, because then they did that and didn't win or whatever, then they started. Then they started their own company. Mm. Now they do uh, Disneyland Paris. So oh. That's like their main one. So they do all like the Avengers fights, 
um, and then they got hired for Back to the Future. That's so, really cool. But then they came in and were like, this is really weird, this, but cool in a really good way. So yeah. I remember going from the original Les Mis to the Dubai version of Les Mis, which is basically the Sondheim version of Les Mis. Mm -hmm. And I think I said in a previous video where, I think it was one of yours, where everything got ramped up in the new version, oh, yeah, like yeah, all yeah. of the sexual bits, all of like the violent bits, everything got like really, really ramped up, including Eponine's fight. And Eponine's fight in the original production was like very calm and she was like very elusive, like no one ever really caught her that much. Like she need Montparnasse in the balls and he fell to the side and then she'd run to the gate and then as she ran to the gate, one of the guys would like grab her around the waist and turn her around and then she'd bite his arm and that was kind of the extent of it. But the fight in the newer version was like so, so physical. Like there wasn't a point where she was yeah. being like grabbed or held or like restrained by somebody. Mm. And then she'd get hit round the face by Tenardier. And the Tenardier at the time was like, I think it'd be more impactful if I hit round the face with a crowbar. And I remember just being like, Please, please no. don't let me hit around yeah. the face with a crowbar. And everyone was like, no, 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 we're just gonna go with the hand. The yeah. hand's fine. Because it was an actual crowbar. Like, it yeah. wasn't like a prop that had been made out of rubber specifically for yeah. if someone accidentally got hit with it. It was a proper, like, metal crowbar. What was amazing about Back to the Future, though, when we were doing it, is that we were, like, creating the choreography, like, creating, like, because it's never been done before. Mm. So basically, the big fight scene, there's quite a lot of fighting between Marty and Biff, mm. but the big one is at the end of that one. It's like, a, it's like the chase scene. It's in the cafeteria, and basically it's Biff and his goons chasing George and Marty, mm. and then they end up having a big fight at the end. So in December time, this was like a month before rehearsal started, we had this like fight school, mm. and we just like choreographed something. It was more that the fight directors got choreographed it, mm. um, but we were sort of doing it together. We sort of did it to this random piece of music that didn't, we didn't know if that was going to be in the show or mm. whatever. And then we got to rehearsals and then they were like, right, this is the music for the fight. We sort of pre-choreographed the fight without the official music. Yeah. So then like the music department were like, we're playing stuff that's, I can see that's so against yeah. like what the fight is. And then walks in Alan Silvestri. He's obviously got it in his brain, he's got, he wants to write a piece of music for this bit. So we, we, uh, we rehearsed for like six weeks, five weeks, whatever, mm. and we still haven't really heard this fight music. Yeah. In, a, in our heads, we're thinking, oh, maybe they're just going to stick with this music mm. and just try and make it work. And then one day, they're like, right, we need to run the fight. We, we've got the, you know, we're going to do the piece of music. Official and music. I can't even tell you, like Alan Silvestri, who's, who's like a genius. Yeah. Like, I can't even think of the music now, but it's just so iconic. It's, it's just all like the iconic bits of Back to the Future yeah. and it was just everything was so accented and it was like it just really worked with the fight. I mean he's done all the Avengers movies right? Yeah. So he's like the pro at writing music for choreographed fight scenes. Yeah. Alan's amazing. I love Alan so much. It's weird because it used to feel like we were doing our thing and the band were doing their thing yeah. and it just sort of happened and, and in rehearsals it was like we'll get to that, we'll get yeah. to that because there's so much else going on. Yeah. And uh, I guess if you're watching it, you wouldn't really go, oh, this doesn't yeah. feel right. But I guess it, for people who are musical, like really musical, like Alan Silvestri and like our musical supervisor and people like that, they're like, this, it, like, this feels yeah. weird. Um, yeah, then Alan Silvestri is like, what is magic? Right guys, um, this video was meant to be loads of topics, but ended up being one because... Yeah. We had a lot to say apparently. Yeah, yeah. you knew, fight calls, big topic. Um, yeah, so that's that. Goodbye! Thanks for popping by. Be safe out there. Don't get punched in the face in a fight call. Don't. Because it will ruin your solo. Especially if you're singing, uh... Dream, dream straight after, yeah. Dream the dream with a bloody nose. Yeah. Bye! Bye.